If you're not excited enough already by the prospect of being here, we have tens of dollars worth of prizes that we're going to give away over the next hour. Tens of dollars Canadian. Yep. Are, these, uh, are these couches from the old hide house? I think we're going to be You buy one, you get the second one free. I love the grip. Let's just start at the start. For those who don't know what Taggart Torrance is, my name is Jonathan Torrance. I used to work on a show called Street Sets years ago. For those of you who grew up without cable, my name is Sir. Jeremy Taggart. I played in a band called Our Lady Pete for 21 years. See what that sounds so much cooler. And then I hosted a show called John O'Vision. Yeah. And then I worked on a show called Trailer Park Boys for a little bit. Now I work on a show called Mr. D. And Jeremy and I started this podcast a couple years ago, mostly because we wanted to record what were essentially weekly phone conversations. That was the extent of our relationship. Like, how are you doing, bud? Good, how are you? Ready to record? Yes. We hit go, talk for an hour, and then Tim, the drummer from the rock band Arkells, great band, would take the files and upload them from whatever Starbucks had free Wi-Fi at the time. <laughs> And he would send our uh, podcast out on the internet. 2.5 million downloads later, here we are, embracing this thing that we call Canadianity, which is a word that we made up, which is essentially just a way of embracing and celebrating the cliches that we Canadians sometimes roll our collective eyes in. Yes, and we're going to explain to you a few of, of what we, of the games that we do. We're going to have a little bit of fun with some folks in the crowd. We, you know, we, we play some games. We, we, we have a few laughs, but most of all, we celebrate everything that is Canadian. Um, most of the time, I grew up, in, and you probably grew up in the media in Canada, we didn't really celebrate what we have here. Everybody's so busy celebrating the things that are coming from, you know, bands that are coming from New England and America and movies in America. And, um, there was so much cool slash slightly cheesy, but acceptably cheesy because it's Canadian, movies, TV, music, that we just, you know, can't get enough of. And it seems the more that we do it, the more exciting people, you know, they get into it and the more that they listen, so. My forehead's really big, have you noticed? <laughs> we were filling a hole with Canadianity, a hole that we didn't even know existed when we started talking about shows like Danger Bay, and The Beachcombers, <laughs> and Road to Avonlea, and Heart, really? People root for Road to Avonlea, I love that. Show, put up your hand, who just moved for Road to Avonlea? That's some deep Canadianity. Oh, do we have any, oh. we have any Heartland fans out here? Oh, there we go. Nice, both of them. That's great. So here's where the next hour is going to go from good to great. If anyone in the crowd has a question, that's when things take a different unexpected turn for us. And for the people listening, if you have a question about Our Lady of Peace, or what it was like to work on Trailer Park Boys, or anything, just put up your hand at any time, and we'll make sure we get a microphone to you, and you can ask any question that you like about anything. We have a, oh, we have a microphone right there. There's a mic from my front. Don't be shy. Come up and ask any question you like at the microphone up front. Town Hall Styles. Questions open complete. Whatever you want to ask. Start by saying, I wasn't sure what to expect. This is my first Comic Con. I'm having the best day. Everyone is so friendly and yeah. so all in and so happy to be here. And I think the thing that's been a really nice surprise is to see so many families here, people yeah. coming together and spending the whole day. It's nice and cool in here. Yeah. Awesome. Compared to like a hot yoga class, it's nice and cool. So let's get going. Let's um, show of hands. Who'd like to come up here and win a five dollar item? Oh, you would. Come on up here. Oh, this is perfect. We're gonna play a game that we just made up called Shatterday Night Live. Shatterday Night Live. We're gonna read some questions about here. Can you make it up? Wow, there you go. Whoa, oh, okay. Okay. Right. oh my goodness. Are you okay? What is your name? Kelly. Are you okay, Kelly? I'm awesome. Round of applause for Kelly, everybody. Oh my gosh, that did not go how I hope. Kelly, come sit right here. Yeah, come on here. Where are you from, Kelly? From London. London, Ontario? Yeah. Is there anyone at home you'd like to say hi to? Um, to my daughter Katie and to Chris. Oh, Chris is here. I yeah. see you, Chris. I'm right there. Look at Sea Monkey sitting right there in the Boy. second row. I see you, dog. You and quiet. So here's how Shatterday Night Live, Live works, Kelly. We're going to read a statement about William Shatner, and all you have to do is say whether it's true or false. And I get by your outfit that you might be the right person to play this game. Does that sound good? Today, I got a picture of him today. What did he say to you? Anything? We both were 
so starstruck and we both whipped out. We, we were going to give him a book. We couldn't even walk the three feet. He was by himself, perfect opportunity. I believe he was reading an e-book. So I didn't want to interrupt him. We saw him, but maybe tomorrow we'll get up the gumption to actually say something. True story. I'm sorry, Kelly, I won't keep you here for too long. Several years ago, a friend of mine who was producing the Canada Day special in Ottawa was getting a whole bunch of Canadian celebrities to sing the national anthem. And she was going to cobble it together in a montage. Your Eric McCormack's and Mike Myers's and folks like that. So she asked me, because I lived close by to William Shatner, if I would go videotape him singing the anthem. And when I got to where I was supposed to videotape him, the first thing I saw was this. Because he was actually digging garbage out of the back seat of his car. So that was my, I'm pretty sure that's him. I thought it was him. I recognized him right away. There you go. Sorry? That is the best part of them in those black pants. Oh, the black pants! Here now, Kelly. Oh, yeah, out. family show. Nice. Kmart's getting right frisky, as we'd say on these coasts. All right, here's the first Saturday Night Live story. And all you have to do is say true or false. Did William Shatner say this? We were basically the same, although Jim was just about perfect. And of course, I am perfect. True or false? True. What do you think, guys? Is that true or false? True. That is true. You won for one. Nice. Well done, Kelly. Nice. Here comes the second Saturday Night Live question. This is a fact or fiction. So it's a true or false in the same regard. My mother, in 1970, saw William Shatner at the Albion Mall in Toronto at the Canadian Tire greeting people at the front. True or false? This was just after Star Trek was canceled. The initial first time it was kind of like, oh man, and it came back obviously after that. Maybe it should be true or false. True, true or, or false. 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 True? It's true. Two for two, Kelly. Yes. Here's the last one. For a five dollar boat floaty. It's a keychain, it's a stress ball, and it floats. If you have a boat, you put your key right on them. And if you drop your keys in the toilet, sorry, they're not gone. <laughs> there was a TV show called Invasion Iowa. Anyone know of it? Maybe it's not true, or is it? In which William Shatner and his crew, made up of actors, went to the town, which was allegedly the birthplace of James T. Kirk. In the town, they got everybody to wear shats on their head. <laughs> true or false? Shats on their heads. I want it to be true. You want it there to be true? It is true. Yeah, it's three true. for three, Kelly. Congratulations. Yeah, there you go. She won a floaty. That was awesome. How can we get Kelly down from the stage? Oh, this way over here. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Take this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> take the stairs. Why don't you take the stairs over here, Kelly? There's the handrail and everything. Round of applause for Kelly, everybody. everybody. I feel bad about her um, rolling onto the stage. Yeah, because there were no stairs down there. No. I guess we learned our lesson the hard way. Yeah, no more messing around in front of the stage. So, unless no one has a question at the bottom mic, let's forge on to our next game, which is born out of Canadian TV, and it's called Plot or Not. Show of hands who wants to come up here and play Plot or Not. You in the back with the hat on. Come on up here. Come on over Put here. Back or... To the side stage stairs. Here's how plot or not works. It's very simple. Jeremy and I will give the plot from a famous Canadian TV show. All this person, whose name we don't know yet, has to do is guess whether it was a plot or not. Plot or not. What is your name? Are you having applause for Mary? Mary! Mary looks like she just came from the Kentucky Derby. Are you, uh, is that a costume? You're Zoe, that's some creepy stuff right there. <laughs> I came dangerously close to wearing the same hat today. Yeah, I did, I really did. Oh, my head's too big. Do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah or not. I'll go first. And audience, shout it out when you think it's a plot or not. Here it comes. Okay, do you know the show, have you ever heard of the show, The Little Miss Hobo? Yeah! Yes. Hobo detonates a World War II bomb and saves a town. <laughs> plot or not. Plot or not? Not. not. Plot. So what do you think it is? No. 
not. Jeremy? It's a plot! Oh, oh. oh. The guy over there, I think he's like, I saw it, you saw it, right? Yeah, you saw it, he knows! <laughs> Holy the great part is. I like how the people on the show, when the dog barked, were able to say, what's that boy? There's a family of four in a late model sedan trapped on a cliff not far away? It's a little implausible. Um, do you know the show Heartland? Yes. Okay. One snowy Christmas Eve, Amy delivers a miracle foal when the vet isn't able to make it through the storm. Plot or not? That does something like that happens in the plot. I fell asleep hearing it, so it's gotta be. <laughs> that is not. I oh, made that yeah. up. That is not. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? How could you make something so boring up? Because it's what I do for a living. <laughs> I make up boring TV for a living. All right, do you have another plot or not, Mary? I do, okay. Everybody needs to bring it to grassy, right? A couple of the buds here today. Uh, this is uh, an episode, Wheels Dad, loses five grand arm wrestling and breaks into Wheel's house and steals a priceless painting. You know how Wheel's parents were loaded in Degrassi? And his actual dad was like a banged up drummer going to Port Hope all the time and taking away his son's love? Plot or not? What do you guys Plot think? Plot or not? You want to hear again? Wheel's dad loses $5,000 arm wrestling, breaks into Wheel's house and steals a priceless painting. His dad, yeah, his dad lost five grand in an arm wrestling match, and then he decides to steal a painting at Wheels' parents' house. No. No? Not? Why did he have to his own house? I know, it's, it's not, but I mean, his dad's done worse things, come on. We all watch that one in Fort Hope, right? Leaving him like that. So she got one, you're one for three. One. Okay. Yeah, 33%, right. Okay, here's the last one, right? I have another one. Okay, so there are two more left. Yeah. Uh, the show Danger Bay. Remember Danger Bay? One clapper. You, sir. One clapper. You know, really, all you have to know is that it was a family of people with ocean-related names, because there was Ocean Hellman and Jonah Crab. Yeah. They were both in the show. And they worked with a doctor who was like a marine biologist. So is this a plot or not? When Doc Roberts is attacked by a rabid sea otter, the kids have to forego the science fair to come to his rescue. <laughs> Plot or not? I'm listening to that guy. Do you want to phone a friend? Can I phone a friend? The, the man that said he watched the show? Plot or not? Do you think it's a plot? He's saying, he's thinking plot. Okay, plot. No, that's not a plot. <laughs> I made that up. So you're one for four. What do you mean? It's what I do for a living. I'm a professional liar. Are you ready? Yeah. Last one. Okay, last one. First, would you prefer a pen or a floaty if you get this right? Um, I do lose a lot of pens, so probably. Okay, pen. All right. Beachcombers. You guys like the beachcombers? Show of hands. Great show. Relic tries to rig the local bingo so he can take his girlfriend to Toronto. Jesse and Adonis foil his plans, disguising themselves as old ladies. Plot or not? I mean, I would watch that even if it wasn't real. What do you think, Mary? I think, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Audience, what do you think? Plot or not? Uh, not. It is not. It's a not. So you got one for six. One for five. Should we get Mary a prize anyway? Yeah. Back there, but please use the side stairs. Yeah, don't, uh, yeah. Won't you come again? Thank you so much for being a willing participant. That was fun. Mary was nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jeremy, do you remember when you were in Our Lady Peace playing in London, Ontario? I sure do. Where did you play here? Uh, the fairgrounds a couple times. Call the office way back in the day. Uh, was anyone there? I remember. Was anyone there? No, I don't mean not At some point, I've had ten dollars from each of you. <laughs> so the, uh, we played a show in London at the fairgrounds like uh, seven, eight years ago, and the power went out. Anybody remember that show? Anyone? You were there? 
and the power went out, so I did a drum solo for like 20 minutes. Just to, because when you go down to brass tacks, that's the only thing people can hear. So that's one of my London memories. This is what I've always uh, found really interesting as someone who is not a rock and roller. When Jeremy was playing in stadiums with our Lady Peace, I was doing stories for Street Sense about why is there so much air in chip bags. So we had a similar but kind of different experience. Um, but as the fact that he's my friend means I get to ask him all these questions like what do you do if you have a headache? What do you do if you feel like you're going to be sick? What if you have the flu? At what point do you cancel an arena rock and roll show because you have a blister on your thumb? And one of the best stories you tell, I think, is when you guys opened for Van Halen and you had a migraine. Yes! In Boston, we were playing a, an amphitheater where the sun was kind of cresting right onto the stage. And uh, I, I just got a migraine right before the show started. So I had to set my drums up backwards so the sun wasn't in my eyes. But then like Sammy Hagar and, and Alex Van Halen, who were sweethearts and nice, and were, took us under their wing, were very nice. But Eddie and Alex were like, man, what are you doing turning your drums around, man? That's so disrespectful. You can't do that to the crowd, man. And I'm like, guys, guys, I, I'm, I'm sick. And then they realized during the show that I had a bucket beside me and I was like throwing up into it like every other song. And like, oh, okay, it, it wasn't disrespectful at all. How rock and roll is that though? It's pretty rock and roll. Meanwhile, I was at the Coho factory doing a story about illegal curves on hockey sticks. <laughs> Doesn't seem fair somehow. Should we play another game? Do you want yeah. to play Lyric or Live? Yeah, let's Who wants to come up here and win a floaty? Um, you, sir, in the second row. Yeah. Tom Scarrett looking map. <laughs> Why don't you come around for the come side, on, side, side here? there? Come on up, round of applause for him, everybody. That's a limbo. Can you go under it? Limbo. What is your name? Round of applause for Michael, everybody. I like it so hot, the rounds of applause are getting even more lukewarm when each person that comes up. Welcome to the show. Have a seat. Where are you from, Michael? Uh, Hamilton, originally. And where do you live now? London. Who are you here with today? Uh, a couple of friends. John and Rob. Okay. All right, so who are you guys? Who are you here to see? Uh, I'm Oh, of course. And did you get to meet him? No. <laughs> no? I, I was not for the line. Oh, really? Yeah. Tomorrow, maybe? Tomorrow, no. maybe? I won't be back, but it was good to hear him talk. Yeah, for sure. It was pretty fun. And did he tell us a lot of good stories? Huh? He told a couple good tales? Yeah, he did. He yeah. did. You guys have a good time with the good stories? We were coming up and meet him. Beautiful. Yeah, it was great. So do you own a boat? Is that why you wanted to volunteer to come up here so you can get a squishy for your boat key? No, I don't have a boat. Okay. Do you have a fish tank that you lose your keys in on? <laughs> <laughs> so here's how Lyric or Lie works. It's very simple. We will take turns reading a lyric from a famous Canadian band, and all Michael has to do is guess if it's a real lyric or a lie. Do you want to start, Jeremy? Sure. Okay. This is a uh, Nickelback. Got any Nickelback? Front row center. Okay. No, no spoilers. Okay, this is a Nickelback lyric. Or is it? Or is it not? Had enough of your guilt. I got cornflakes and milk. So F off. Lyric or lie? Can you read it again? Had enough of your guilt. I got cornflakes and milk. So F off. Yeah, okay. Lyric? I'll say yeah. You'll say it's a lyric? I'm not really a big Nickelback doll, you know. But it sounds kind of nickelback Nickelbacky? It sounds kind of nickelback -y. That is not a Nickelback lyric. That is no, not a no, lyric. No, so you're zero for one. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert, you get the prize, so you might as well just settle in and have fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jan Arden, Canadian songbird and angel. Michael, you listen to Jan Arden, I can tell. What's your favorite Jan Arden? Jan! I remember you, maybe? Uh, Insensitive? Insensitive. Oh, that's Could I be your girl? No. Alright, here's the lyric. Open the curtain, see the sun. Remember that you and I are done. Lyric or lie? That makes me I've only got one dead or no. <laughs> that's sad. Uh, I'm just gonna go with yeah. Lyric? That's a lie. Oh, I made that one up. That is a lie. So you're zero for two. Perfect score so far. Oh, for I'll be the first one to. Totally. Let's pretend it's like golf and you're trying to get the lowest score. Try this one. You ready? 
Atlanta Miles. Everybody remember Atlanta Miles? She had the Black Velvet Jam, written with Christopher Ward, about the music guy. Okay. You'll get all the perks if you give me the works. Atlanta Miles. No. <laughs> oh, no, it's a lie. It's a lie. You got it. Oh, you got it. I think you went for three. You got it. You got one. Awesome. <laughs> That's all right. One for three. Yeah, here's your chance to go 50%. Boy band Hanson. Anyone remember Hanson? All right. Um, boom, bop, pow. Wonder what she's doing now. Lyric or lie? Lyric. Michael, that's a lie. That is a lie. Okay, we're one for four. Michael, are you ready? Last one. Last, last one. Corey Hart. Anybody like the Corey Hart out there? Who doesn't like the Corey Hart? It's such a shame. This ain't a game. It's never a surprise. My heart's got two black eyes. Aww. His poor heart. Lyric or lie? Lie. Lie? That's a lie, Ron, you got it! That's a lie, Ron, plus a regular, everybody! Would you like a squeegee, squeegee, or a pen? Oh, the pen, eh? Thank you, Bob. Well done, Michael. Thank you so much for coming up here and playing. That was really fun. What a good time. Ooh. What a good time, Michael. So I'm not a rapper, but I play one on TV. Maybe we'll have Michael back again, but yeah, welcome back. And something weird happened in my life a year or so ago. Um, Snoop Dogg was on Trailer Park Boys. And he is a nice man, I'll tell you that for free. I met him for the first time in a scene. So he disses me, and my line is, oh really, Snoop, never heard of J-Rock? That's like one, never heard of DMC, <laughs> B-word. And he's about 6'5", so the first time I meet Snoop Dogg, I'm going, oh really, Snoop, never heard of J-Rock? And in my head, I'm like, this could go either way. He's the guy that coined the term dog. He started calling people dog. Yeah. So after I said the line, there was a moment's hesitation, and then he said, get out of my face, you John Denver looking B. And we became fast friends. So one of my favorite interactions with Snoop Dogg was he uh, invited me into his trailer, and I was sitting opposite him, going, well, how did I get here? I wear a do-rag like as a joke, like it's a joke. <laughs> And he said, can I ask you something real quick? I was like, sure, Snoop, anything. Are you down with Swiss Chalet? <laughs> Snoop Dogg loves quarter chicken dinners because they don't have Swiss Chalet in the States. And I was like, you haven't even been here at Christmas for the festive special. Like, you don't even know what Swiss Chalet is. They switched to Lindor balls from Toblerone, like it was a whole thing. So we, I bonded with Snoop Dogg in real life over quarter chicken dinners. True story. It's a great story. We have a question at the bottom line. Oh, hey, how are you? What's your costume? I'm Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy, of course you're Poison Ivy. Of course I'm Poison Ivy. And what is your name? My name is Shay. Jen? Shay. 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 Right. Shay. Oh, nice. It's just my East Coast accent. Shay? Shay, like the stadium? No, no one remembers that anymore. What is your question, Shay? Well, first of all, I'm a big fan of Trailer Park Boys. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. J Rock, will you rap for us? Oh, wow. Jerry's gonna beatbox for me, and I'll do one verse of Trailer Park Live. Here I am, you're in the house. How many times have you sat out on the deck, getting wrecked, and waiting to collect a check? No one that's for this life is ever gonna get, get, no when you're from the park, it's in your blood, it's in your sweat, debts and doubts and bets and bouts of insanity. Is it society, or is it just vanity that makes me plan to be the man that I plan to be? Instead, I can't see the forest right in front of me. For the trees, it's a social disease, and all that other MCs are on my back like, please, please, take the ROC, is so hard, oh, he ain't even getting royalties from me, help my goodness, they're gonna come get me, steal a whole album worth of samples, cause the left me cold, stole the diamond ring to make my girl my wife, we got a wife, we got a wife, wife, that's trade of our life. So the answer is no, I won't. Thank no you. way! You made mine. Thank you so much, Shay. Nice. That's a good song. That was tight. 
I was. Okay. There was when Trailer Park Boys first came out. It was a mockumentary, yeah. not a documentary. It used the um, mockumentary device of interviewing characters within the show, but there weren't many shows on TV like it at the time. The Office wasn't on. So when it started airing in the States on BBC America, the swearing was bleeped. And imagine trying to figure out what an episode of Trailer Park Boys is about when the swearing's bleeped, first of all. And second of all, people were like, I think it's a documentary. Like, I think that's about a group of Canadians that live that way. Because, to be honest, there was a lot of Trailer Park culture in the States, and people didn't get it. And this is the interesting thing, it's come to full circle. There's a point forming on the horizon. When the show first came out, people were like, I don't understand, it's cops from a criminal's point of view, it doesn't really make sense. We always said you have to watch three episodes before you make a decision about it. So it was on the ropes, and it was on the verge of being cancelled. And then bands like Our Lady Peace, yeah. and Rush, and The Tragically Hip started passing around DVDs between tour buses and saying, this is the weirdest thing, you, you have to check it out, I can't really explain it, you just have to watch. Yeah, we would play literally on tour and OLP in like 99, 2000, we kind of got hooked on the show, on the bus. Actually our sound guy, Tim, originally did sound for Sandbox, which is Bubbles, Mike Smith's old band that I actually did shows with, with OLP, so I knew Mike Smith and I, I, you know, Tim, the sound guy, is like, you gotta see this show, Trailer Park Boys, it's amazing. And we got into it probably season one or two. But I came up with this crazy idea that we were about to put uh, this Gravity album came out and we were gonna do a big arena tour across Canada. And I was like, man, why don't we have the Trailer Park Boys MC the tour and bring them out with us? So we brought Ricky, Bubbles, and Julian out with us with Mike Clattenburg and they actually filmed an entire episode that's still on the cutting room floor somewhere, but it was literally when the show was going from who are these guys to by the time we hit, you know, uh, the other side of the coast, we came across the country in about a month. By the end of that month, we couldn't even go to like a Denny's or a, you know, a, a roadside stop without them getting swarmed. It was unbelievable how popular that got during that like year. Well, it's not overstating it to say that Jeremy Taggart is quite responsible for the success of Trailer Park Boys because it wouldn't have happened. And I remember in the first couple of seasons getting in my car at the end of the shooting days and thinking, that's the most fun I've ever had at work, but no one's going to watch this garbage because it was a group of mostly non-actors. We were sitting around on Coleman coolers trying to make each other laugh and it was a really fun experience, but we couldn't imagine how it would have ever taken off as a TV show. And the fact that it still resonates so deeply with, um, was it something I said? Oh no. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, oh nice! nice. The butt mic. Good. All right, question at the butt mic. I would never walk out on this one. <laughs> um, so you're just talking about Jeremy Park voice. Uh, I just wanted to know how much of the dialogue in that show, because it's so natural and it's naturally funny and comes off so well, how much of that is ad-lib that you guys just putting your own personalities into the characters? Great question. Um, in the first couple of seasons, because Showcase was a new network at the time, to satisfy their demands, we would do a few takes per the script. And then Mike Clattenburg, the creator of Trailer Park Boys, and just a comedic genius that I first met working on Street Sense together, um, he has such a commitment to the joke that we do a scene and it's really funny, and he'd say, let's do it again, but let's give Randy a bag of sour cream and onion chips. And we're all like, okay. And for some reason, that would just take it from pretty funny to suddenly Randy and Ricky are having to tug of war over a bag of chips and the name calling and insults that would ensue. It just made it next level. So obviously in the later seasons, six and seven, we were given a lot more freedom, but I still have permanent scarring on the inside of my cheeks from trying not to laugh during takes. That's for sure. Thanks, Mumbo. Great question. Math. <laughs> Not a bad show. I would say that J-Rock is probably one of the best TV characters of all time, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I still, I'll go to YouTube and like look at, you know, like the J-Rock's lot, his best moments, and I start crying like three times in. I gotta say the, the, the best joke I ever heard and what kind of hooked me to this guy saying, man, this guy is legendary when it comes to counting people. And he, he threw out the Louis Del Grande looking mask to Lady. And I was like, man, Louis Del Grande, like, I don't care if 
1% of the population only gets that joke. It's so great. It's that was a deep thing. cut. It's so deep. There's, there's probably more of me and J-Rock than I care to confess, and I, I was a little worried when the show first came out, because of all the characters on the show, he's the most apt to feel a bit cartoonish. And that's, that's so why intense, check that. It's up, you dirty ape, you! Does anyone else see that, or is that in my mind? <laughs> so when the show first came out, I wasn't sure if the rap community would accept it in the way that we intended, um, as kind of parody, and I wasn't sure that the real J-Rocks, who I went to high school with, would appreciate it or be offended. And the rap community was like, man, thanks for making fun of those guys that have Chevettes with 22 inch spinning rims that they got in Canadian Tire. And those guys were like, thanks for giving us a voice on TV, dog. <laughs> Somehow landed in the valley between both camps and didn't offend, and I'm very thankful for that. Classic stuff. Classic stuff. Yes. What should we do? We could, we could, uh, play a game. Shake, you wanna play blank look at math? Let's play blank look okay. at math. We need a volunteer. Oh, this'll be fine. You come on up, oh, sir. Oh, yeah, come on. Oh, okay. So blank look at map is very simple. Map is a word that I coined on uh, Trailer Park, short for a word that you probably shouldn't say in mixed company. So all we do is write down our first impression of someone in the look at map uh, context. You have one for this? Should I even do it or you got it? Okay. We just need one second. What is your name? Greg? Greg or Craig? Greg with a G? Okay, you just have to stand and face the people. This won't take a minute. Do you want to play for a squishy? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't even have to write it down. Are you ready? Greg is a... Uh, I'm gonna say Greg is a speedy muffler. It's ready when it's GD ready. Look at mask. <laughs> kind of guy that works at speedy muffler is not gonna give you a firm commitment on time. I'm saying it's a uh, uh, dark guy did a round of roids. Look at math. Good. That's a deep cut. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it, man. It's that easy. <laughs> Thanks for playing, Blank. Look at math. Want another to bring someone else for it? Sure. Does anybody else want to come up and play blank look at Anybody else want to be ridiculed on stage? Come on, that's Brayden right there. Brayden with an eye. Brayden's going to come up. All right. I got this one. You got this one? Yeah. I got this one too, actually. Brayden, you built us a house with that hair. <laughs> Brayden, how old are you? 16 years old, do you have your driver's license? And where do you live here in London? By the what mall? Argyle Mall, okay. And do you get to use the car sometimes on weekends? There you go. Great, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you ready? You're uh, sick of hearing your mom arguing with Kid Rock about alimony looking mad. <laughs> I'd say brings up, I'll tutor your sister, the hell you will, look at math. <laughs> there you go, Lot. That's, that's for your boat keys, Brayden. Uh, should we do one more round of playing like math? One more, oh, okay. Uh, okay, come I on. Oh, wait, this is it's too intense. <laughs> okay, come on up, come on up. <laughs> is he coming up or did he leave it? Meanwhile, any other questions at the butt mic? Because that's the thing I love. This is, um, okay. All right. What's your name? Matt. This is Matt, everybody. Where are you from, Matt? London, Ontario? Nice, are you having a good time today? Nice, what's your favorite part so far? You can say this. <laughs> Okay, I got you. Ready? You're a uh, listen to the wall for two weeks looking math. <laughs> Pink Floyd. I'm gonna say on suspension from Best Buy for showing up high three times looking math. <laughs> right? That's fair. That's for your voting keys, Matt. There you go, bud. 
Thanks for coming out, Matt. Round of applause for Matt, everybody. Any more questions at the butt mic? That have to do with, oh, we have oh, a question. Wonderful. Ghostbusters. Kristen Wiig looking math. Ah. <laughs> she ain't afraid of no ghosts looking math. What's your name? Allie. How are you, Allie? Very good. 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 Oh, you got awesome. a boot. Awesome, okay. Yeah. Um, Get right in on that mic, sorry. Okay. Can't hear you. My question is actually from John Legend. Nice. I have been searching the internet for years trying to find, it's a skate you did, but it's a Yeah. Did you, does everybody ask you this? The moths. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot find that skit anywhere, and I, I tell people how hilarious, I try to imitate it. Where can I find that skit? On VHS in my basement. <laughs> Come on over. He's not kidding. If you find yourself in Nova Scotia, that is true. Okay. Come to my house, I will show it to you on VHS. Okay. Um, we made this mockumentary about everything I've ever done is kind of real, kind of fake. I did the Joe Schmo show, which is a fake reality show. I did Trailer Park Boys, which is a mock doc show. John and Vision was always the wrestling match between the earnest, issue-oriented show that CBC wanted to make and the sketch comedy show that those of us that worked on it wanted to make. So every now and then, after doing a couple of episodes like, my best friend lent me some pants, we got to do some fun episodes that were sketch. So we did this episode called The Moths, which was a, do a mockumentary about a subculture of people that drank fresca, ate bananas, and said, cuckoo, cuckoo, and they slept in closets, right? On the surface, it was nuts, but it was actually deep down a commentary on kids and cliques and fitting in and being part of something. Um, but that is one of the, there are two often cited sketches that we did on Jarvision. The Moths is one, and there was another one called Dreg in the City that actually, do you remember that one? And Stefan and Pat from Degrassi played the thugs in Dreg in the City. It so I really appreciate the question. Full circle right there. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Allie. I'll try to get it converted. Okay. Yeah. I live in rural Nova Scotia. Just ask anyone. Actually, maritime directions are like, all you do is turn left where the SO used to be. <laughs> that, that doesn't help. They all know you in Truro. Sure they do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can use my name like a credit card in Truro, Nova Scotia. Not to brag. But it's true. I'm proud in retrospect of shows like Street Sense and Jono Vision because they didn't talk down to their audiences. They kind of uh, gave kids in the regions insight into what kids in Toronto were doing. It was before the internet service. So um, I really like the balance that we struck of uh, talk and sketch and comedy and all those things together. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Allie. Any other questions at the bot mic? Is anyone going to pass out from heat? <laughs> you haven't? Oh, you're going to pass out. You're going to pass out from heat, not a question? All right. Thank you very much, guys. We're, uh, I think that was really fun. We'll be yeah. here tomorrow, 10 to 3. Come say hi. Yeah. Our book, Canadianity, is in stores on Tuesday at Chapters in Indigo. They seem to be out there now. now. They're out there now, seemingly. They're selling them early, so that's a good thing. You have a question? Yes, one last question. One last. Bones! Somebody asking if you would ever consider dropping a mixtape with any mobile artists. Have I ever considered dropping a mixtape? With local artists? Oh, that's a good idea. I wrote a song a couple years ago called Clap Your Turd Cutter. <laughs> and uh, it's a love song. Um, but then I think, like, so suddenly I'm a fake rapper, but I'm writing real raps. The first verse was like, get off the couch and turn around, huh? Make it clap, I want to hear that sound, huh? The pants are smuggling, two can hands, I'm a high straight bucket like two can Sam. That butt should be on Instagram, huh? I want to tap it, that's my master plan, huh? Tap it like a sugar maple makes dessert, like, Dumb. Classic. Great stuff. But then I think, so I'm going to tour as a fake rapper. That's where even uh, for someone like me who loves the hybrid, that gets too weird. But I'll tell you something, Jeremy and I play Name That Tune in a lot of our live shows, and getting to play guitar and sing while Jeremy plays drums, it's like bringing an Uzi to a kitten fight, but it's really fun for me. So that's kind of the music I'm into these days. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate the question. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks Just for really fun. Thanks for staying with us. Let's throw one of these out. I, I'd like to give it to you. Where's the young gentleman who, yeah, you. Can you catch it? You had your hand up for half an hour. Oh, dear. Thank you very much, friends. That was wonderful.